Records of the economy of France begin with the fall of the Roman Empire, which devastated the French economy. The economy began to recover in the Middle Ages when agriculture and trade picked up. The 14th century saw another collapse due to the Hundred Years' War and the Black Death. The Renaissance era brought a time of growth to both agriculture and industry. At this time, France was the third most populated country in the world. Lyon was the center of trade markets. Market fairs occurred about four times a year. This was the extent of French exports and imports. From 1520 to 1600, there was a period of inflation due to rapid influx of gold and silver coming from Africa. The new monarch, Henry IV, enacted monetary reforms that provided better coinage, reduced debt, and reduced tax burden on peasants. He also increased spending to improve infrastructure. Louis XIV enacted a tax on income and property value in order to fund his great military conquests, thus increasing government spending and France's debt. At this time, most of the French population were farmers. The Little Ice Age destroyed the agricultural industry. In order to save the economy, Louis XIV had his royal dinnerware melted down. The end of the century was plagued by bad weather and war. This caused an agricultural slump and increased government spending. By 1715, the trade deficit reached 1.1 trillion lires. The next monarch, Louis XV, put in place a stable monetary system with a strict conversion rate between gold and silver and set values for coins. 1860s, the American Civil War led to reduced trade of cotton and slaves. From history, we see that weather and wars have the greatest impact on the French economy. France is showing some lucky numbers, doing better economically, it seems, than its EU partners, notably Germany. It is avoiding recession and posting growth, even though not much. The French are going into 2012 a bit vulnerable. Long accustomed to a prestigious place as the world's fifth largest economy, today France is on thin ice with the credit rating agencies worried about downgrading. GDP rose just a tad in last year's fourth quarter, but it was more than some could boast, and spread over 12 months, growth was 1.7%. On the other hand, households continue to consume less, and the trade deficit is now 70 billion euros, with unemployment on the rise, over 9%. Some 32,000 jobs were shed in the third quarter. Some of these were in industry, and analysts are pessimistic for this year, expecting weak growth or none, forecasting worse losses. They identify it as a structural problem demanding solutions. On peut vivre. We can still live with a service economy, but there has to be some industry. And in France, we're not far from the bare minimum, without a doubt. This decline in industry's role in the French economy has to stop. The month after Standard & Poor's rating services stripped France of its AAA grade, now Moody's is warning it could follow suit, citing a deterioration of the country's debt. It is far from the only one whose sovereign accounts are under Eurozone pressure, but France has a bigger reputation to live up to. Its deficit is 5.5% of GDP, with forecasters predicting it will stay above the 3% maximum allowed under EU rules. Debt is forecast to overshoot 90% of GDP this year. This analyst says putting France on notice is done with a quite precise calendar two or three months ahead of a rating change. We can see that this is quite important because of the French presidential elections coming up. That could bring different proposals and interpretations depending on the different economic programs proposed to the French. Cartoonists have taken to depicting incumbent President Sarkozy as a child-fed bottled milk by Germany's Chancellor Merkel. Whoever wins the elections in May, the economy will need more than milk. France is strong in its power, public transport, and defense industries. It is considered weak in its agricultural industry due to high subsidies.
Some of the major natural resources of France include coal, iron ore, bauxite, zinc, uranium, antimony, arsenic, potash, feldspar, fluorspar, gypsum, timber, and fish. These are all resources of metro metropolitan France. French Guinea, a territory of France, houses several natural resources such as gold deposits, petroleum, niobium, tantalum, and clay. France's main economic sectors include agriculture, industry, and services. Agriculture includes items such as wheat, cereals, sugar beets, potatoes, wine grapes, beef, dairy products, and fish. It accounts for 1.8% of total GDP. The industry sector is made up of machinery, chemicals, automobiles, aircraft, electronics, textiles, food processing, and tourism. It accounts for 18.8%. As previously stated in the video, France's current GDP per capita is $35,600. Its real growth rate is 1.7%. France's current imports include products such as machinery, vehicles, crude oil, plastics, and chemicals. The following pie chart will show you from where across the globe France is importing its products. Its current export products include items such as machinery, transportation equipment, aircrafts, plastic, pharmaceutical products, iron and steel, and beverages. The following pie chart also shows its current export partners across the globe. In 2011, France ranked number six in both imports and exports in comparison to other countries. Being a member of the European Union, France takes part in several preferential trade agreements. Union policies make France's borders seem more open to trade. It has to do away with any and all trade restrictions on imports and exports for other members of the EU. Workers from other member states could move to France for employment without any obstacles. Like most countries, France has historically favored higher levels of protectionism in order to safeguard domestic industries. However, after joining the World Trade Organization in 1995, they have had to comply with the regulations set for the entire European Union. In compliance with WTO standards, France has opened itself to freer trade, reducing tariffs and other non-tariff barriers to trade. France is currently ranked 67th in the Heritage Foundation's Index of Economic Freedom. With a 2012 score of 63.2 points, France's economy is rated as moderately free. This is largely due to its responsibility to comply with European Union trade statutes, as determined by the World Trade Organization. The European Union consists of 27 member states. These states work together under the European Union to create a European-wide free trade market. They are dedicated to creating a worldwide free and open exchange market and in turn building a stronger and more prosperous Europe. In 2011, France was the fifth highest ranked country for being a host of foreign direct investment with $1.049 trillion of hosted FDI. France was also the third highest source country of FDI with $1.615 trillion of sourced foreign direct investment. France sees the importance of investing and being invested in. The United States and Europe are each other's primary source and destination for foreign direct investment, accounting for more than 60% of the inward stock of foreign direct investment and more than 75% of outward foreign direct investment stock worldwide in 2009. As a member of the European Union, France uses the euro as its currency. Since 2008, the euro has appreciated and depreciated in correlation with the U.S. subprime mortgage collapse and the European debt crisis. Unfortunately, as being part of the EU, France must carry the burden of debt of failing EU countries like Greece and Spain. As of 2011, the exchange rate was 0.7194 euros per US dollar. Europe's agricultural powerhouse, French producers make great use of one-third of the European Union's fertile lands. Historically, France has been a large producer of dairy products and high-quality wines, making it one of the United Union's largest agricultural exporters. One of the most technologically advanced societies in the European Union, France has attracted large amounts of foreign investment, allowing the country to continue researching and developing new technologies. These technologies have allowed France to be a large exporter of manufactured goods such as machinery, transportation goods, and pharmaceuticals. These advancements have also produced an educated labor force that has seen high demand in recent years. 
French companies account for 35 of the global 500 corporations with brand names such as Sodexo, Christian Dior, Total, Air France, La Poste, L'Oreal, Michelin, Vivendi, and Renault. In conclusion, France is currently one of the highest ranked countries in terms of economic size and political influence seen throughout the world.